Film Don't Lie is presented by Brady Pest Management, the official pest control of the Georgia Bulldogs, and ASW Distillery, distilled by dogs. We'll tell you more about them at the end of the show. Brent, we're talking about Georgia's defense against Tennessee. Like it's done for now five straight games, spotted him a touchdown here early, and then after that kind of clamped things down against Joe Milton and this false offense. Let's talk this first play. I know people want to know. I think people kind of know what happened, but I'd love to hear yeah. your take on it. Well, I, I love Kirby's comment after the game. Like to say, just get it out of the way, fellas. If we're, we're going to do it, might as well just do it on the first play. But the biggest key is we got to go to the snap. Like, so George is playing aggressive from snap one. Like, you see, it's man to man, single high, like Tyke coming across. He's in man on, on the on the tight end there. You got two guys down at the bottom that are in man coverage. And then at the snap, boom, get the first movement, everybody. So when we think about sort of gap control defense, like, boom, right there, pause. So Zion Logue goes from sort of head up on the guard to that inside to his right, to the A-gap. So, so that's one A-gap covered on that flank. Smile Munden is sort of, in essence, a, in a run blitz per se, but he's now got the B-gap between the guard and the tackle coming forward. And then Chaz outside C-gap. On the other side, Stackhouse squeezes down into the A-gap. C.J. Allen holding strong in the B-gap, and then Michael Williams staying outside C-gap. couple of things to me with this play. One is the aggressive nature with which George is playing in, in man coverage that's going to hurt and potentially give, big, big, give up big plays. Two, back a little bit further. So because of what the action is happening here with the tight end arcing out or coming across – and Milton looking at this as a replay. Michael doesn't like he's he's now surfing versus truly contacting and maybe pushing down that tackle. And then at this point, look where Zion Logue is. This is never where you want to be as a defensive lineman because you basically now have two guys who have been moved because of him being moved to the B gap. Now. C.J. Allen still has to kind of play and sit there and see, but because of the uh, lack of contact with the tackle, the tackle easily works out to him and is able to engage him. Tyke coming across a man, like if you see it on the All-22 view, he he sees the kid has the ball and obviously hits the brakes. He's just not like the back just is good and has a head of steam, and he's just not able to get there quick enough. and then. Bullard takes, you know, a little in terms of angle and then just gets – get outrun. Like, last year's you – know, Starks is down here, man. Last year's in man. Then they finally see. At this point right here, that's a touchdown. Right there. Yeah. And that's – and I think like Kirby said after the game, like, hey, we're, we're used to giving up – you know, okay, somebody gets us like this, we give up 20, but not 70, you know, not 75. The other part is – this is and this is to me when you think about why does Georgia do what it does, and this is where Tennessee kills teams. When you put four men down, when you put a f- four down lineman down there, the it's easier for the offensive line to get to those guys. They're 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 closer, right? Verse and this is to me why you see Georgia play so much meant three down lineman look against Tennessee because now you're those those five guys are blocking those three guys more often than not. And it's easier to bring people and keep other players free in essence. But, you know, you just missed you slight miscalculations there. Boom. Big play. Get it over with. Tennessee gains 75 yards on this play. I counted this up during the watch along. I believe on its next 12 plays, it gained about 44 yards. Yep. It was less than four yards of play the rest of the game. Yeah. It's like 3.7 after this. Unreal. And then you think about sort of game situation. You give up a touchdown on the first play. You come back, drive down, and only get a field goal. Like if they like they go down and score, like uh oh, but instant just shut down. And this is from a concept standpoint. What what's Tennessee doing here? They're running sort of a bash concept, which we actually saw back in the day with James Coley. Uh, long enough, like Andrew Thomas against Vanderbilt. Think, remember that him sort of running down the field. Same sort of deal here, but with all the line blocking left and then the back going right. So misdirection. But this is f- phenomenal from Zion Logue. He makes like doesn't make any statistical thing here, but 
but just staying there because if he flows with the the line, you've got the one blocker on Ty Key, and you've got another huge play. Like this is a you know boom cut up. Nobody's there. You're into the secondary. You're at least eight to ten yards again before you're seeing another player. But him just hanging out, and I think a lot of that is his own just sort of. He's not a playmaker guy. He's a, hey, stay and do my assignment kind of guy. And hustles, gets in the way. Great job. So now you put him in second and long. He hustles, but like he also chases it too. He didn't oh. stop back there. No, great effort. Phenomenal effort. Okay, yes, second and long. And I don't know if this is something he just saw on tape, but if this, like Michael, by the way, the first five plays of the game – was just beating dudes left and right. The fifth, the we're going to show the first four plays of the game. The fifth play of the game, he you know beats the tackle and the guard and causes a like four yard loss on a QB run. But if that ball isn't tipped or hit or if it doesn't hit the tackle, I think it hit the tackle, right? It hit yeah, their, it hit the Tennessee tackle helmet. Like CJ Allen, I, guess, I I don't know what he saw exactly that said, okay, I'm I'm full out dead sprint here, film work potentially, but. Because everything is flowing outside, like it's going to be some sort of you know bubble type quick game. If it doesn't get tipped, he's pick six in it. And then the biggest part of this is you don't give up. Like, I mean, it's going here, right? That, yeah, that's where the ball's intended to go with yep. with blocker yeah, here, little, little sort of delayed screen, yeah, tight end screen, and that's pick six the other way. But freak play, but you don't give up, and you force him out of bounds. Great job by Starks, and you don't let him get the first down. Because then you know. As a Georgia fan, you're probably sitting there thinking back to the, what was it, 2019 against LSU when Burrow caught the ball and they got like 15, 20 yards on a third down play. Yeah. Uh, Georgia's such a disciplined team. And when things happen that they've practiced, like it always, but this is some, this is backyard ball stuff. Like you don't practice a ball going off someone's no. helmet. And what happens from there? You can't pass it again. You only get one forward pass on play. And so he has to run it here. And like this is just two guys here trying to make a play with Chaz and Taiki. They end up running into each other being in the same spot, it allows Milton a little more space there. I don't think there's anything wrong that happened there. You're no. instinctually trying to go make a play. Oh, yeah. But you, you hope that you have vision to, to still play where are my guys, but maybe you don't know at this point. You're just chasing the ball. And just, like I said, phenomenal not giving up, force him out of bounds, and now you get him in third down. And I, I hate the design here. I, I don't really understand it as much, but – what can't be said enough about this game is the tackling. Yeah. Like this is ball caught player down. Open space, two guys, about a horrible job by 34. But this was Georgia's highest graded tackling game of the year. Uh, based on first run, they missed two in the game. And then now you forced a three and out and ball back your offense set the drive up and, and this is, and now you're sort of back in feel and control of the game. The crowd is down a little bit. Next time Tennessee gets the ball is 10, seven, like totally different game versus, Hey, they score on the first play and then you give up, you know, first downs and keep them feeling good about themselves. The second that this receiver catches it here and tries to reorient it, his body kind of parallel to the line of scrimmage, it's over at that point. Yeah. Like he has a much better chance to try to like, get to the sideline at this angle. It's not going to happen either way. I think Georgia makes the tackle here, but you're going to slow down on a dime. I mean, Tyke Smith's a pretty good tackler. Well, but, but also how many times, like, for example, against Auburn, have we seen him have, you know, be in some open space and, you know, get juked a little bit and miss one? Not in this game. He was on it in this game. Let's go here to a first and 10 play. Milton taking a shot. I don't know that he needed to take the shot, but Kamari Lasseter, whew. Well, what what is this? They just gotten a first down. I think they just gotten a couple first downs. The only, so it's still the only 10, thing I'm saying is, just throw the slant. Throw the slant. Well, what's amazing is is this is a lot of this is Heupel's offense because if you look at the bottom of the screen on the play, by the way, good job from Snackhouse. Keep fighting and getting pressure. But the receiver at the bottom screen takes two steps and stops. He doesn't move the rest of the play. Wow. So this is a defined, I'm throwing this deep no matter what. And that's what they always do, right? They always want to – they get a couple first downs, and we, we've covered this for two years now. They get a couple first downs, and then boom, they want to take the shot. But Lassiter, 
like top 10 graded corner in the SEC now, top 10 in completion percentage allowed. I think it's like 44%. Passer rating allowed is like 60. Like he's finding and playing the ball. Like this was a great, like I almost thought he was going to pick it, uh, but not getting beat. And, you, and we talked about it. What's How is Tennessee going to be in this game? One, Milton's going to have to play otherworldly. He couldn't. Two, you're gonna, they're going to have to hit some deep shots or you, know, you have the holes in the running game. Like after the first play, it wasn't there. And they couldn't hit the deep shots because you played them so great. He's been he's been really good and ascending as the year has gone on. Well, when Kirby Smart by trade is a defensive backs coach, you think some of the greater defensive backs that George has had in his tenure, DeAndre Baker, Eric Stokes, Kamari Lather is in that conversation. Yep. Keely Ringo from an athleticism standpoint, but I think Keely made more mistakes than Lasseter. Lasseter is a really sure thing. Yes, right now I, he's better. He's just flat better. He's going to be like if you look, think about those first two names: Baker Stokes, first round picks. Tyson Campbell was like the first pick of the second round. He's going to be in that late round one, early round two talk uh, comes come spring. All right, so we showed the the run play that Tennessee had to start the game. They didn't find a lot of success, although. If you're going to choose this running lane, this you're helping Georgia out. But also, it's a, so it's a couple things, a couple other reasons to show this too. Yeah, this was a horrible, like, what are you doing, dude? This is you ran right there. Like, just go there and get the first down. This was the next play. So after the deep shot, Tennessee, historically, second and 10, I'm, they're going to run the football and try it. But look at how they do it. And this is something that is as much a look back at last week and then also and and also Auburn and then also previewing Alabama in 2 weeks. Like they're going to see this tape and they're going to with a running QB threat. This is counter bash. This is so their counters going right, the back is coming left. So back away from the offensive line action and look at the two linebackers. Those are the two that's Jalen Walker and Raylan Wilson. You know, fully flowing with the offensive line play. Uh you got I think it's Munden that gets Dog I mean, walked here by 34 like, in the trips. Boom, push back. Like the that sort of run scheme where it's true misdirection. I think you're going to see a decent amount of that from Alabama in a couple weeks. And Milrow is much bigger running threat than Joe Milrow. Yes, and it's going to be you know, Georgia. Georgia hasn't faced anyone that can run like Milrow. No, no, not at all. And not Jay many Daniels can. can, I suppose, but Georgia didn't play him this year. Yeah. They ho- they hoisted him last year. And he, Miller was even different because he's so much more powerful. But this is just from a scheme standpoint, and you see it based upon – don't be shocked if you see this in two weeks. Milton again. This see is just, Allen, man. This was the one target that he had in coverage. And look at the, look at the brains, by the way. I, I, I truly wonder if this guy had a two-way go. Because Allen almost ran the route for him. And that's actually a really good throw, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and that ball's really the only place it can be caught. But I, I don't think he gets the first down even if he catches it on the play. And it's just phenomenal coverage. When your inside linebackers can cover skill guys like this, man, it makes defense a lot easier when you can trust that they're not going to get beat on those plays. There's yep. not many teams that have guys that can do that. You saw Georgia thrive with N'Kobe Dean doing this for three years. And now he's getting more reps in the NFL. Yep. All right. This is one that, yes, it's not a completion here, but in terms of don't let a man get behind you, and, and we haven't shown much criticism of Malachi Starks because there ain't much out there. No, but this is one where, so a couple of things. Big picture theme in this game, Joe Milton just wasn't good enough. Yeah. He just wasn't. And, and from a clean pocket, which this was an insanely clean pocket, 13 of 23 for 99 yards. Now, a lot of that is great coverage, but it's also and, – and and there – I by the way, if he doesn't evolve his offense, oh, I, I would be furious as a Tennessee fan. Like, that just – as a person who appreciates offense and the, and the diversity of things that can be done, it is infinitely predictable what they can – what they do and how they do it. Very frustrating to watch from a – if you're a Tennessee fan. But Check anyway. out this, this overload. Ain't, ain't no dogs in here. And so what do you got? You got trips to the to the wide side of the field. So three, you know, three receivers there. And you have a, in essence, a quarters look. I think this is in defensive terms. I'm I'm not the best defensive term guy, but this is called poach. 
quarters look there, and then Starks is eyeing the third, the inside receiver, the three receiver, to take anything that he runs vertically. So he, you, you see how he turns and finds that guy, and he's ready to go with him crossing because it looks like he's crossing or go with him vertically. And the receiver does a good job and of – you sort of baiting into that. This is kind of like what the Falcons did to, uh, or CJ Stroud did to the Falcons for a touchdown where it's like, Hey, I'm going to run inside. And then I get up the field vertically. And like you said, this is something that in, in some of these plays we've put in, put in here for a specific reason. This is one, guess who completes the deep ball basically better than anyone in college football. That'd be Alabama. That would be Jalen Milrow. Like his, I think he has a 99.5 passing grade on throw 20 plus yard throws, insane stats on 20 plus yard throws. A good passer. This is a touchdown, right? Yep. And by the way, that's Jermaine Burton running that route for Alabama. Yeah. So like just things to think about moving forward in two weeks, because what Georgia, by the way, just did, like we talked about this for you know, a month ago, this is, was the toughest regular season stretch. And it's still, by the way, still one game to go. I'm not discounting in any way, Georgia tech, just because of the rivalry aspect and they have a QB run game a little bit that's confident. Bobby Buster Faulkner. <laughs> yes. Uh, but and, – and obviously Georgia should handle so you handle and take care of business. But, like, they've just utterly dominated this stretch of games where it's like, hey, our, our, our gear, our fifth gear is – we got nitrous in the fifth gear and everybody else is just kind of cruising. Can't, can't hang with it. So how's Georgia Tech going to score in its first drive? Because it may be the only chance they get. Go ahead and give it to them. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Haynes yeah. King's pretty good now. Like for people that have watched well. Georgia Tech, the offense is better than it has been. The defense just, is not. Yes, no. They the other side of the ball. I, I think was it Eddie or Paul one of them said something about Beck having four hundred and five touchdowns against them. I, he might if they if 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 Georgia Tech scores, he might. Yeah. Like if that if they stay in the game scoring, he might put up those kind of numbers against their defense. Well, Georgia's defense is finding its groove, especially so. the secondary. But I, defensive lines playing as good as we've seen all year. And you have a C.J. Allen. That, when you lose a Dumas Johnson that, who's played as much as he's played and you don't feel that, man, that's a compliment to roster management and mm -hmm. recruiting. Yep, and coaching. And, and all those things. All, all the details that that makes them on a 28-game win streak and – a cut above everybody else in, in college football right now. But Terry, uh, Terry and Minger Dawkins played, played, played a lot of snaps, played well uh, in this game. So just a lot of different guys giving, uh, getting time and also giving you production. But, yes, two weeks. I I haven't dove into Alabama a ton yet, but I've watched a ton of their stuff, and it's just they're feeling good. But I also think there's a little bit of a competition. I don't think the teams that they're beating down are, are as good maybe as – folks think or it just well, they don't but in terms of talent it's georgia and alabama i think then there's a gap if alabama played new mexico state this week maybe we're thinking differently but they get auburn so but i am I very much am reserving any sort of true thoughts about alabama until i watch the auburn game yeah because i think that's going to be a whale of a football game actually this georgia independent had, of this past weekend georgia has two straight games in the city of atlanta that's a great spot to go check out asw distillery and their tasting rooms they are distilled by the dogs five of the six founders are uga graduates i like the fiddler bourbon but i'm telling you the hunker vodka right now is their hot item because every hunker vodka that is sold a portion of that goes to classic city collective there's a partnership there classic city collective georgia's nil arm you see where this goes right if you're buying tito's vodka Tito's just gave $20 million last year to the University of Texas. So just saying, Georgia might play Texas in a playoff. And if they don't, they're going to play them next year in Austin as members of the SEC. So that's an easy way for you to kind of determine what is going on with your fandom. Hunker Vodka from ASW Distillery. Also, the official pest control of the Georgia Bulldogs is Breda Pest Management. They protect Sanford Stadium. They can protect your home too. BredaPest.com. All the high school playoffs going on right now. If it's in this North Georgia area, I bet you Breda is supporting those teams. I know they do the North Oconee Titans. Let's go Titans. Big game against Benedictine this week. <laughs> Might be the state championship. I think so. Potentially. We'll find out. Uh, film don't lie for North Oconee? No, we're not going to do that. Although we, no. we'd, have a, we'd have an audience <laughs> of some. They probably wouldn't. Never mind. I'll... I say the high school's like right there. 
like through yes. the woods. So, yes. Uh, I'm very connected to, to North Oak County over here. All right, we're going to wrap this film up live on Georgia's defense. We'll have more coming with Georgia's run game. I had another video talking about should Carson Beck be Heisman winner, Heisman finalist. That's all there. We're filming it live from UGA Sports.com.